Welcome back to the Hoops Temple podcast. You all know me. Joining me from Sacramento, Aaron Schroeder. Hey guys, good to be here. Joining us from New Zealand, Dylan Williamson. Hello, hello, good morning. And joining us from the fourth country to be recording the Hoops Temple podcast, Jack Dan in Mexico. How's it going? What's going on? Hola. <laughs> buenos, <laughs> buenos tardes. And because he's in Mexico, Jack is going to do the entire episode in Spanish. Sí. Don't worry. The rest of us are all fluent. Sí. We'll know what he's talking about and be able to continue on just fine. Sí. Vámonos. <laughs> We're here to talk end of year awards. Gentlemen, I wanted to start off asking you two questions. Question number one, with all NBA being positionless, did you abide by the positionless? And question number two, with MVP also positionless, are your first five for uh, all NBA the same as your first five for MVP? Yes and yes. It's the same five, and I went positionless. I did not yeah, I mean, make a team. I did not abide by the by the traditional standards. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sending this into the league, so I had to abide by the right. rule: sixty-five game minimum and positionless. I actually ended up being positioned like anyway with just how it yeah. ended up working out but i i kind of wanted to do positions anyway because i like the ability of recognizing the centers too because i feel like they often get left out but i i went and i i told myself i'd be open to changing it and i still ended up being positionless or i ended up being more positioned and no interesting yeah, yeah. dylan was your first five the same yeah. for MVP? Okay. Yeah, I'd say so. It's just one. It's a difference of one. I'm curious. Actually, I'm curious. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's do uh, first First five uh, MVP ballots. Uh, Jack, you said you had one difference. What is your it, one difference between your MVP ballot and your all NBA first team? It's Tatum. That's for MVP or not first team? So he's first team, but he's not in my MVP. He's not in my MVP top five. Really? Wow. Because my fifth guy is Brunson. Okay. Who I have in my second okay. team. Okay. I, I, I respect like that. that. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like that's not crazy. Because Brun- Brunson to me is pretty far and away three in terms of where the guards are. And I know it's not positioned, but either way, I think he's solidified. I think he- and also, I think he's solidified solidified himself enough as like the next franchise guy that it feels right to put him in the MVP thing. But then when it's all NBA and it's more about winning, Tatum. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I felt about it. What is your top five, Jack, for MVP? Uh, so it goes Jokic as the MVP, followed by Luka, Shea, Giannis, Bronson. A very Do similar list. Non- Jokic, Shooters. <laughs> oh, I hope not. Nope. Jokic all around. Although I do remember us doing this last year and saying it was like a month before the end of the season. Be like, all right, everyone got Jokic for MVP? We all said yes. And yeah. then like a month later, we're all like, are you sure? We, we got to Embiid. I was the first one to bail. I was like, fuck it. I don't think I did. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I jumped off. All right, so it sounds like the first five is going to be in some order for all of us. Yeah. Jokic, Shea, Luka, yep. Yep. Giannis, and then Tatum. I have him as fifth for first team, as well as fifth in my MVP ballots. Uh, Aaron, Dylan, it, how's your, how are your brackets looking, ballots looking? I landed with Jokic at one. I went Giannis at two for my MVP. It, it's all pretty close. I, I just felt like... The Bucks have kind of been a disaster. Like they fired their coach midseason, and it's been such a mess. And they're the second seed in the East, or they're one of the best teams. I think they still hold the second seed as of at least yesterday. Yeah, today. Um, and it's it's because of Giannis averaging like 30, 11, and six. And Dame has struggled in consistencies. The rest of that roster is pretty barren at, at certain points. Um, I just was more into that than than what uh, what Luca or what uh, Shea was doing. I think if Giannis was on the Thunder, they would have like 65 wins. Yeah, the same for Dallas. It's just it's just those rosters. Um, 
it just speaks to the the kind of player that that Giannis is. And then I went um, Luca at three, SG at four, and Tatum at five. Mm. Yeah, I had Jokic clear number one, um, almost in like his own tier, where it's like some of these other guys is a close argument between. But I think number one, Jokic just sort of run away with it. Um, what would be interesting though is if Embiid had a made like a, like a, a, just scraped in at sixty five games, even like playing this last. Um, week of the season with you know one of his knees still bad um what c- sort of conversation we could have had then um but yeah Jokic clear number one had Shea number two Giannis three Luca four and I went with um a difference in MVP and first team and had Tatum as my five but I didn't have him first team wow oh whoa interesting okay. all right Who, who's your case for someone else for uh first team <laughs> I went with Kawhi Oh, you hold <laughs> on. Um, okay, sure. All right. Wonder why you did that. <laughs> Talk to me about Kawhi. What's what's the Kawhi case? The Kawhi case is that the Clippers are going to be a fifties win team that fall apart whenever Kawhi doesn't play. Um, this guy on both ends of the floor is really the thing that holds it all together. Any games that he misses, they're a below five hundred team. Whenever he sits, they drop off on both ends of the court massively. Um, whereas Tatum, um, I don't think he scores as efficiently, not as impactful of a, um, well, maybe maybe um, doesn't peak as high on defense as Kawhi does. Um, but as the player on the better team, I feel like I have to reward that more in MVP than in first team. Yeah, I was seeing the Kawhi on-off stuff. I was debating whether or not he would make my All-NBA teams. Uh, and Oh, wow. And, That's a really I, hot take. I saw him plus eight <laughs> on, negative four off. And I was like, all right, all right, we, we can give it to him. I, I've been hurt by Kawhi. I had I came on here around uh, ha- uh, All-Star break and said, Clippers going to win the West, or Clippers have the best chance outside Denver of winning the West. And uh, he, they've let me you down. But that? I think I said that. I Why? said that. <laughs> Tell him to invite me on it. <laughs> I was, you know, sometimes in podcasting, you got to fire off takes, Aaron. Yeah, sure. This, yeah. you know, you, you got to you gotta ride the wave. Uh, Man, you, you, d- you, ahead, you don't go. have to lie and pretend that you were um, saying that for clickbait. You believed in your heart that Kawhi Leonard was the superior player and that with the Clippers' dip, they could have really achieved something. <laughs> I was. I really wanted this to be the Kawhi season, like when the Clippers went on. He's probably going to play like seventy games. Yeah, when when the Clippers were winning all those games and they were on the run, and it was clearly it was Kawhi as the best player. I was like, could we get the Kawhi MVP? Could we get there? Because that that would solidify his career for me so much more. So right now, it's just it's the early Finals MVP in San Antonio, the weird one-off year with the Raptors. If you could get an MVP season or like a close to MVP season, that just makes me feel so much better about ranking him all the time. But uh, instead, he's left me a little bit cold. Hmm. To totally derail the conversation, um, you <laughs> NBA history aficionados, um, is, Ka- is Kawhi, does he have a case as the best player ever to not win MVP? No. no. To totally put West. you on the spot? No, Jerry West I, never got one. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like the logo of the league, and they never gave an MVP. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's bizarre. It's like I, him. Try the choir, Chris Paul. I mean, I don't think Elgin Baylor got one. Um, I think there are a couple other guys that that are more old school guys. They just ran up against Wilt and West or yeah. Wilt and. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Oscar did them, get though. one. Yeah, Oscar has one. I, I it's like. Of the modern era, it's basically him and Chris Paul. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, how, how many Wait. of those guys that you listed, including Chris Paul, ever peaked where they were the best player in basketball? Where there was including Kawhi? Two, where there was a season or two seasons where they were the best player in the world. Including Kawhi, none. <laughs> Come on, mate. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> it, Don't discredit 2019, 2020 Kawhi. Anyway. At least, at least six months, he was the number one guy. Actually. Okay, then two. Him and Dwayne Wade. With Kawhi, is you have to right. to get like the best player in the world title. You kind of have to like end the season with it, or at least start a season with it. And it just never, he just was never able to to put the end caps on it. But I did have Kawhi in my second team, 
heading into this season, I wasn't super into the Clippers roster. And so much of it's like Kawhi is going to play 45 games like he always does. If he can play more, the Clippers will be really good. And here he is playing a bunch of games and playing really high level basketball. Um, he was an all NBA lock for me for sure. And, and I respect the first team all NBA bit, although I, I can't imagine that coming to fruition. Yeah, I have him in second. I mean, I, I he was, I think, probably eighth or ninth in my overall ranking. The Clippers have been, so, the on and off numbers are ridiculous. The Clippers without him look terrible. The last couple of weeks of, not couple of weeks, I guess, they've been okay recently, but there was a few weeks without Kawhi and it was terrible. The the defense that they lose without him and Westbrook, the Westbrook injury was massive too. I saw that team live after Westbrook and it was like, a different you it, the guys were the same it's craziness all right so first team's pretty well solid i don't know if anybody wants to just touch on the insane season lucas had we kind of touched on Jokic being a tier on his own Giannis, aaron you made the beautiful case of why he should be number two i have him number four on my mvp ballot uh anyone feeling impassioned about luca all I know, every game that motherfucker is questionable, every game that dude has 50 points drives me <laughs> insane. As my like falling apart, it's like, Luca, Achilles, questionable. And it's like, Luca did what? Luca has 27 and a half. And I'm like, God damn it, dude. <laughs> um, he is the probably the best one-man show in basketball right now. And and he just he, he dominates the ball. Massive usage, like 37%. Um. You wouldn't want anyone else to have the ball in their hands, though. And he actually is is handling the off-ball He's better um, when Kyrie has the ball. And the Mavs been pretty good because of it. Um, it it's it's an MVP season in uh, mm-hmm. in different years. And I think, you know, we came into the season with Luka like 7th or 8th in our rankings. Um, we were nah. pretty passionate about that. Yeah, we did. Yeah, At we least did. I did. I had like say, yeah, we did. Um, and, you know, basically cited... He's a fat whiny bitch, basically. Sorry to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what like the case was. Um and uh he has proven to, to play some pretty nice basketball this season. The defense has also improved. Now there are still times where he is, as Aaron just eloquently put, a fat whiny bitch and doesn't get back on defense. But when he does get back on defense, I do feel like the effort has been better. He is doing better, putting a hand in the guy, his chest, sticking with his defender. I mean like they do usually hide him. But if he gets switched uh, on a guy of like size, it's not just barbecue chicken time and time again. Like he is actually performing decently enough on defense. Yeah, it's not like James Harden where like once you switch on to the dude, he's like, oh, well, I guess I'm giving up. Um, I feel So I do think that his on-ball defense has improved, but I do think that his off-ball defense is still an issue um in particular the fact that he has to guard the weakest offensive player um i think actually hurts your defense and that he provides no help defense at all and that's you know he's guarding the one guy that you're happy to help off of um so i still think that he has a decent defensive negative especially when you combine that with the fact that he's never going to get back in transition at all um but the the offense is ridiculous i think the playoffs are going to teach us so much about luca this year because his team had is miles better than it's ever been we've always asked like what would he look like with solid Kawhi, with like a good healthy normal Kawhi season and we're getting that this is the first what is it i think it's probably the first scandal free Kyrie season since 2014 it's insanity he's getting all of that they made awesome trades at the deadline if luca luca has a chance to either like if he if he loses in the first round people are going to be talking about him crazy next year if he goes to like western Conference finals even if he makes a deeper run of the finals people are going to look at him as an mvp next season for sure it's he's so perfectly positioned with this Mavs team it's kind of a broke year for the playoffs yeah. it feels like like we already just put money on him being the mvp favorite like, i don't want to bet year. on him winning mvp i want to bet that vegas yeah. will start this next season with him as the mvp favorite that just feels like I think Western Conference that. Finals or deeper, he's the MVP favorite when you start the year. What did I used to call him? Do you guys remember? Next year's MVP? Okay. Yeah. To, I call <laughs> that saying, every year. I was yeah, going to say, hasn't he been like the Vegas favorite for, favorite for like the past three years? Yeah, Matt, every year. Next year's so MVP. Much better. But I'm really scared of the, this Dallas team. They're a I good team. Too. This is different. 
PJ, I, I mean, PJ is PJ, but Daniel Gafford looked so good, especially in person when I got to see that team, like, click. When you can bring out a big, like, Lively and then a big, like, Gafford and just switch them off, you're just hammering this other team. It's insane physicality for those two guys. Yeah, it's really funny. He's always made lob threats look good. Like, he's made Dwight mm-hmm. Powell look somewhat serviceable for years. Yeah. And then, like, JaVale McGee didn't look good with him. And I was like, man, what's is, – is JaVale washed? And then JaVale looked good elsewhere. No, but, JaVale's like, washed. Now JaVale's just <laughs> – But now he's, he's got – He's not washed. He always I like JaVale. Me. Jack doesn't like JaVale. I like JaVale. <laughs> either way, this is about Luca, And now Luca always has either Lively or Gafford out there. Or if they go small ball – like, they have the versatility to go small ball and have Maxi Kleber out there as the five. I think Dallas is going to be sneakily fun to watch. I hope they don't draw Denver in the first round, but uh, like any other matchup, if they get the Clippers, I'm I'm totally into watching this matchup. Oh, uh, I have sweet, a quick yeah. question. I have a quick question no. for the crowd. Um, before I uh, I want to read my second team NBA. I want to get a little back on track, but I have one quick question between Dallas and Phoenix. Who is the nightmare round one exit? Like hunting the most, which what, what, round one they lose in six in round one. Which team goes into the off season like I can't fucking believe we just lost in the first oh. round. Like what a what a mess. I think it's the Suns, right? I mean, you you can't do everything you did in the last two off seasons, the Durant, the Beal, and not expect it to work when all three guys are healthy. Like that's been the only argument against the. It's like oh well, when they're on the floor, they'll be fine, and they're on the floor, and they're not that great. I, they're I a good team. Sons, okay, wait. They're a good team. They're a they, fine they're good. team. They're fine. Sure. I don't think they're going anywhere. I think the Suns at least have the like fallback excuse of like, well, Beal was hurt most of the year. We didn't quite get to gel. Dallas is like, we, well, we gave up everything. I get and this the, is what we have. The counterpoint to the Beal thing is like, hey, you got a career season from Grayson Allen. Yeah. Of all people. Yusuf Nurkic looked fine at times. Like, you just got performances out of throwaway pieces. And Beal was healthy for some of the year. Like, there, is Beal, are you, do you want to bet on Beal being healthy next year? I don't. No. No, but they do. I don't. It's, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's insane. And, and if you're betting, if you're going to the offseason, betting on Bradley Beal's health, then you are in a bad, bad place. Dylan, break the tie. Who would you rather – Who who's in worse shape uh, if they lose in the first round? Yeah, the Suns have the biggest excuse just because they haven't been healthy all season, but they also are working with a much stricter timeline because Kevin Durant is in his mid-30s. And yeah. every year that they aren't contending for a championship with Kevin Durant, they are closer to being you know, in, in basketball hell. Um, so I think it's worse for the Suns. Hey, speaking of Kevin Durant – He's on my second team all NBA, looping this back around. My second team all NBA was. Aaron, why don't you uh, read your second team? Yeah, give us yeah. the whole five guys. I have Jalen Brunson, Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. Okay. 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 Marking, marking those names down on the spreadsheet. You said Brunson, Durant, Davis, Kawhi, and LeBron? Davis, Kawhi, yeah. Speaking of the Mavs, 136-142 in overtime over Houston. Kyrie has 48. Holy shit. Really? Nice. Yeah. Luka wow. has 35, 10, and 11. Kyrie has 48. The Mavs uh, are down big. Would you would you hear an argument that this is the best Kawhi season? I mean, they haven't I, done anything in the playoffs, but like so far in the regular, far, season? The regular season, this is his best year. It's one of his best years, at least. It's either that or 2019. Yeah, I, yeah. I totally accept mm, that. 2017. Yeah. 2017 was his best regular season. He had more, didn't he have just more volume in 19? Though? 19, he played like 60 games. I mean, he, he really was warming into I can't, kind, I can't of working his, uh, kind of working yeah. his way into the, the, the rotation. Yeah, we're on to that right. pretty. But yeah. Dylan, who was your Just second team? Um, I Jason Tatum. Anthony Edwards, Devin Booker, Jalen Brunson. And do you guys remember for like the first 60 games of the season where Tyrese Halliburton was the best offensive player in the NBA? 
or thereabouts. And so I'm going to give him credit for that first half of the season and give him second team all NBA. Man. Hmm. Can you make that one more time for me? Just for my. Yeah. I was just trying to collect all the names in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it is hard. Um, Jason Mm -hmm. Tatum, Anthony Mm -hmm. Edwards, Devin Booker, Jalen Brunson, and Tyrese Halliburton. The guards, second team all guards, second team all guards. It's it's right. Wait till um all defensive, and I'm naming ten straight centers. (laughs) (laughs) Jack, who was your second team? I know you had Brunson. Yeah, I had so I had Brunson, Durant, Kawhi. And then Edward Sabonis. That's my that's my all two. All NBA second is Brunson, Edwards, Leonard, Durant, Sabonis. I'm so glad I'm not the only one that has Sabonis, Sabonis on here. Thank you, because <laughs> Sabonis, I think I think I think you have to for the same reason that like I understand the logic of putting Halliburton on there as much as I don't agree with it. Uh, the numbers with Sabonis are rid- I could I could pelt you endlessly with Sabonis statistics that would make your head spin. Like he is very close. He, he probably won't do it, but he's not going to be very far off leading the league in both rebounds and assists this season. That's something that has only been done by Will. That's and he didn't do it in the same season. Yeah. Sabonis is averaging basically 20 points, a little bit less than yeah. 14 boards, eight assists per game. Uh he's leading the league in triple doubles, double doubles, fourth in win share, sixth in block, box plus minus Fifth and four, he's top ten in like deflections. He's contesting like top fifteen or top twenty numbers of shots per game. Yeah. Um, I it was surprised when I was doing my defensive uh, all defensive team work. How often his name popped up hmm. with defensive metrics, hmm. and I was like, this <laughs> this maybe shows that defensive metrics aren't the greatest. But also, he Sabonis is just everywhere. Like, I'm yes. I'm disappointed in you, Aaron. This is where you stake your claim. Thank you. you. Should. Yeah. Dylan at least He's is telling. a proper Clippers fan. <laughs> yeah. I had him third team. I had him third team. Sabonis is on my third team. Um, my Sabonis rant is he is the only good player on the Kings this season. And as we've seen other players, basically the entire rest of the roster take a step back, except for Keegan Murray, took a tiny step forward. Um, Sabonis has been night in, night out, crazy consistent, controls the glass, runs our offense. Um and maybe I spent too much time on Twitter, but the Kings being like mid has brought in so much Sabonis hate. You know the Kings are gonna be the first team to win forty five games and no good players. We have no good players in the roster. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? Forty five wins, not an NBA player in sight. Um. So yeah, now I think a Fox not has one. been inconsistent. He has he's had like eight nine games with a game score under ten, which are like true shitters, like real <laughs> real shitters only in game scores under ten. And um and Sabonis has just been consistent enough and can elevate the play of average players to at least look like rotation guys. Yeah, Fox shitters are unique games. If you have, yeah. I don't know, Nate or Dylan, if you've had the chance to see one live, uh, they are magical. They're like whales. You he <laughs> what? It, I'm telling you how it happens. He he starts the first quarter with like a ooh, don't shoot that three, and he does it three times. And he, <laughs> smoke them all of them and then he and then he like he and then brown pulls him at the six minute mark he goes off and then he's back in in the second quarter and he smokes three more and he keeps fucking shooting he just won't <laughs> stop for some reason if he's missing him he's like i gotta just keep shooting he's got dion waiters energy it's terrible i love <laughs> i love the three pointers i love the three point revolution from jaron fox but my God, we could tone it down just a second. <laughs> it was so good at the beginning of the year because it was he was hitting it out at a lower volume. And then for some reason, okay, well, maybe not for some reason, his confidence built it. And now he's shooting. I, I don't know if he's actually shooting more. It just feels like he is. And he's shooting at a way worse clip. And now the season-wide numbers are back down to where they were before. So it's like, so we had this whole three-point revolution mayhem at the beginning of the season. And it's all for nothing. It's all gone. I've got it's the yeah. I've got the number on Fox's three point frequency. Um, last oh, year was his career high. He shot twenty five percent of his shots from three. Um, this year he's up at thirty four percent. So he's um, demolished oh, his career God. high in three yeah. point frequency. Yeah, I haven't gotten to witness that that personally, but I have had to watch Killian Hayes play basketball uh, against the Washington Wizards in person. 
So that um, that was an experience that I'll never get back. Nate, I had to watch Killian Hayes drop 17 points in a loss. I was Live. at the same game. That's why I raised my hand. <laughs> yeah. For the vision yeah. viewers, I raised you my guys. hand. I at the same game. That was a real fuck shitter, for real. That was a real fuck shitter. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I have a question. It, it, how many games has De'Aaron Fox played in? 69. How many games has De'Aaron Fox taken 12 or more mm-hmm. three-pointers? 12. I know the answer. I'm going to let them do it. 17? Okay, we're a little too far off. Right. It's 8. <laughs> okay. 8 still, times still De'Aaron Fox lot. has taken 12 threes. It's, it is interesting because I think in the preseason, all I wanted for Christmas was a De'Aaron Fox three-point revolution. And we got it. And then he stopped sh- shooting mid-range jumpers, and he stopped attacking the basket. And it's like, wait, go back! Like, I just wanted him to have a consistent shot, not make it like higher purpose of his game. Um, he also was nursing a shoulder injury basically the entire season. Um, that limited his effectiveness driving. I think that's part of the reason he shot so many uh, forty-five footers. Um, he was in my. If there was a fifth team All NBA, he might have snuck in there for me, but I just really wasn't interested. I was surprised how fast I eliminated him when I was doing this this debate. Uh, but yeah. someone I did not eliminate, and someone who's only attempted 12 or more three-pointers three times this season, Jalen Brunson is the sole player to be unanimously second team, all five of our... Really? Ballots. Yeah. Yes. Wow. It makes me feel significantly better about having him in top five for MVP. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, he's been leading the league in usage yeah. rating since Randall went down. And like the team has not been as good, and he's been a little bit uh, his his efficiency's kind of dropped since Randall, but went down, and part of that's just he has to do so much without Randall and OG and Anobi and Mitchell Robinson, who I feel like we've all just kind of forgotten. This team's starting center has been out for like half the year, but um, no, there was there was a point where I thought he could have snuck into the my fifth place for MVP. So you're definitely not crazy there, Jack. Brunson's the hey. best Nick since Patrick Ewing. Totally. Damn. We're stuck in this. Okay. No, in no. This. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm I don't saying, think it's crazy. If I'm Brunson tears, if, if Brunson can like win a playoff series, yeah. then we can have we should have that conversation. Totally. Um, I I will give you that. If they if he wins a playoff series, we could start having that conversation. It's Until not that then, far off. Car- yeah, but Carmelo. Uh, what was it 2013? He's third place in MVP. The team is 50 something wins, 55, 56. What year is it? Memory 2013, I want to say. Yeah, the LeBron's like, what, what, how far in first place was LeBron that season? Oh, LeBron's like near unanimous. It's him, and yeah, then Durant and, and, steals and, like 12 votes. Yeah, and so when it's like, when you know who the MVP is and it's clear, you can like kind of wipe your ass with the other votes. You're like, ah, oh, Carmelo. And you're like, oh, here's the thing. It, it's just, it's not as impactful, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, he's doing hot takes, but. John Bronson, great season. It, it's it's close. It's close. Isn't yeah, it crazy we're having the conversation about Jalen Brunson though? At this level, like second team all NBA. I don't know where yeah. we had him in our top 100. Um, but he is uh he's unguardable and it's like not ethical design. hoops, man. It's ethical hoops. <laughs> it's not like it, it's there's no I, I don't see the foul baiting. I don't see like, he doesn't do the bullshit sj does he flips his head back every six seconds trying to get foul calls um it's like mid-range dominance and the knicks play good hoops i'm just i'm all for it i have no moral qualms with jalen brunson's game yeah i i saw his 40 40 some piece against the kings live uh i i think i fell in love a little bit i won i there is your aaron's right it, it's weird like ethical hoops is such a twitter term and I feel like so chronically online for even like hearing Aaron say it and be like, oh, yeah, totally, dude. Ethical hoops. <laughs> um, Guys, but, good news. Good news. Uh, we had him 25th in our preseason oh, rankings. ESPN had him 32nd. Wow. Fuck yeah. Fuck ESPN. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck ESPN. Yeah. Hell of a contract. Oh, my God. For both. Yeah. Jesus. And the Mavs are the dumbest team on earth moving it. we'll leave it there yeah um, one one thing on brunson just on his um ability to score ethically um a lot of the other guys that get brought up as like ethical scorers um these guys that don't draw fouls that shoot a lot of mid ranges you know play an aesthetic sort of way um a lot of those guys don't actually end up um 
contributing to very efficient offense. Like it looks really good. And then because they're not supplementing their efficiency with free throws, the offensive rating is actually mediocre. Um, but Jalen Brunson, when he's on the floor, the Knicks have a 122.7 offensive rating, which is through the roof. And they're about 15 points worse when he sits. So not only is it is it ethical, but it's efficient. I like yeah. it. I love it. You got one of those stats for uh, Anthony Edwards by chance? You put me on the spot, Nate. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so Anthony Edwards <laughs> is one of the guys with three uh, votes for second team. It was you, Jack, Nick, and I. Jack, you got uh, some Edwards takes? Oh, on the spot. Uh, but about Edwards, he's been the reason why I had him as high as I did, and which is second team, is I've been so impressed with the non towns time here. But I assumed they were going to crater. I assumed this team was going to fall to like maybe six territory. And he has been unreal in carrying that offense. The th- the, when he gets hot from three, in those fourth quarters, he is an unstoppable. He's unstoppable. He's also he's just cold, so though. cool. He's cool. He's cool. But when he is cold, it could be it could be a okay. Rough yeah, match. but he, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll give you that. He, a cold ant is terrible. He's a he's like the ultimate kind of microwave guy where he could be insanely hot. And Jesus Christ, oh my God, get this guy off the court. Yeah, I. Uh, some of his offensive metrics are a little bit up and down. Some of his on offs aren't aren't the best. But he shows up a lot in the defensive metrics that we have, the deflections, the shots contested, um, defensive plus minus. And when you balance that versus his offense, like a lot of these guys, you know, I, I too had Halliburton in my second team. We'll get to him in a minute. But like Halliburton's just giving the offense. And his offense is, is better uh, than, than what that Edwards gave you for most of the year. But – his defense is nowhere near that. And so I, I like Edwards as a two-way candidate. He's just a very impactful player. And, yeah, that's that's my case for him. Yeah, I mean, part of the reason that the Wolves are able to be such a great team is not only is Rudy Gobert absolutely carrying them to an elite defense, um, and to help him with that too, give him credit, um, but they finally have managed to get an efficient offense around that as well. Um, and the big reason for that is that Anthony Edwards is basically running their offense um, and they get to a very high level when he's on the floor. I saw him throw Gobert a lob, something I didn't think he knew how to do. His pick and roll game last year, absolutely <laughs> garbage. This year, better, mm-hmm. better. Uh, Aaron, do you have him in your third team? I do. Of course I do. He snuck in. Um, I wanted to note in our preseason rankings, we had him 18th. Pretty good call. Pretty good. I think that was a reasonable jump. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the Wolves have flirted with the one seed for a good portion of the season. They're still in the race to get it. Um, even with Towns' injury, they are, they're still a very, very good team. Um, and honestly, uh, it's not not a testament to how great he is. Probably my favorite moment this season was Anthony Edwards demolishing the Warriors early on in the season. Does anyone else remember that? Like he hit like six big shots and was just talking shit to Draymond. Uh, it was that was that was like peak basketball to me. I was like, this is the best. <laughs> Jack, do you remember that? Never oh. Edwards just like pieced the Warriors up and was like talking shit to Draymond. Vaguely, yeah. There was, was I, there like uh, a yeah. was there like a moment in that game. I don't remember. It was just uh, it was just oh. was, it's like it was like I thought I was watching Kobe because he was like clutch mid range <laughs> jumpers. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Like, destroy them. <laughs> I I enjoyed it. Um, he's uh, he could he could be a monster point of attack defender, and when he gets hot, he kind of engages on both sides at like this like super saiyan level. Um, he's just mm-hmm. a lot of fun. Yeah, he doesn't do it as much. Like, it's a long regular season, so they're like McDaniel's, even uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker. I feel like probably picks up more defensive assignments in the course of any regular game. But that, those final five minutes, if he's not in foul trouble, he just will lock guys up. He can flip that switch in a, a really fun way. Um, yeah, when he locks in, I think he is legitimately one of the best on-ball defenders in the NBA. Yeah. All right, so that's a guy that we had three yeses on. Um, Sabonis, I meant to double-check this. Is he the third team for both Aaron and Dylan, or is he just completely out 
for uh, for one of you. Item thirteen. Dylan. Dylan. <laughs> I, I I actually haven't decided on my last spot. I'm open to I'm open to arguments. I'll get there in the end. He's one of the guys I was considering. Um, I don't know how I feel about choosing like the second best player on the nine seed to be all NBA. Okay. <laughs> second best player. <laughs> Listen, Malik Muggs hurt. I, I, know, you know? I, know. Yeah. I know. 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 Oh, no. Jack, that, that how was, many that was that was intentionally inflammatory? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack, how many wins do the Kings get this year if Sabonis doesn't play? Twenty. Twenty-two, maybe 22. like a twenty-three win team. Yeah, I, it's like legitimate like twenty wins on his own. Um, just he, yeah. maybe he's not a twenty-win guy, but the consistency is all that matters to us. The team has not been great. Um, what's been most interesting this season is that Darren Fox is no longer a good clutch player. And this season, it was Leak Monk the entire time. Like, towards the end of last season, it was like, oh, my God. De'Aaron Fox is taking and making the craziest shots I've ever seen in my life. And this year, it's actually Monk, um, who's been this closer. Um, so a little a little take it away from the, the Fox dynamic. But, yeah, Sabonis is great. He's on my third team. Can I read my third team on NBA? Are we there? Uh, no, we've not talked about some of these guys. I want us to actually let's enjoy the seasons that some of these guys have had. Yeah, please and, take your time. Th- does anyone else have what uh, Kawhi takes? He had two second team, he is my third team guy. Dylan's first team, uh, Dylan gave a little piece. Aaron, Jack, any, any strong feelings or Dylan more strong feelings about Kawhi? Nothing too strong. I love Kawhi, he's on, he, he was probably, <laughs> he's probably eighth for me. I, I don't have anything too crazy to say about him. Yeah, he's a fun guy. He's a fun all guy, right. yeah. Uh, all right, who else do we have? Two vo- Kevin Durant got three uh, second team nods. Myself, Jack, and Aaron. Um, I guess one of the things. For me, having Durant over Booker, because I was, I was trying to figure out how to piece those two guys. In, in, a, in a vacuum, they are two of the top ten players in the league. The way they played this year, uh, I feel like Booker has been better when he's been there, but Durant has just been there a little bit more. I know the games played is close; it's seventy to sixty-three, but like some of the Durant slog was those early games without both Booker and Beal that I feel like hurt some of his numbers. Um, but Durant's been a very willing, good passer, and asked to do a lot defensively that a thirty-five-year-old should not have to do, and he has done well enough. Not like, not making the case for him to be on all defense, but I do think his defense needs to be appreciated. I mean, absolutely. How many times this season did he get switched on to the other team's star play? It was constantly. It, if it wasn't, yeah. so who was it for them? Grayson Allen getting most of the big assignments. Ooh, it's, it's a lot of switches. It's a lot of switches to Kevin Durant. Yeah. Heading to yeah, the but... season, I, I kind of we had KD like. We are skeptical of the Suns because Durant would have to do so much. Mm. And he's done all of it. He has been this like it, it, and, um, impeccable offensive workhorse. He has handled these defensive assignments. Kevin Durant's played in 2,500 minutes this season. Do you guys know the last time he cracked 2,500 minutes in a season? Um, Warriors' first se- season? It's 2016. His last, his last season, OKC. Wow. It's been that long, and he's like he's played seventy games, and and the whole question. I mean, last season we were. I mean, how many games we played last year was. Uh, I actually was have like it up 40, right in front of me. Forty-seven, forty-seven games, and we we're like, is he third team All NBA? Because there was no limits. Um, I think we anticipated fifty something, maybe sixty games from him, and he's going to crush that and play a legitimately full season at this crazy high level. Dylan and I were much more optimistic. We did the first part of the top 100 without you. We had him as fourth coming into the year. So, wow, nice job. We I had think that faith. Is a win. Yeah, always what I'm saying is that we're dominating the top 100s this year. Like we're not going to talk about any of the misses because there just aren't any. Perfect. Perfect. Let me find list. one. Let me find one. <laughs> um... right. uh, Tyrese Halliburton and, and Andrew Wiggins uh, 45. You guys oh, did that. Yeah. I didn't do that. You oh. guys did that. I didn't do that. Yeah. All right. Whoa. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. 
Thank you. Ridiculous. Okay. Our oneness was the most inexplicable <laughs> f- single season fall off in NBA. Um, no, this history. was expected. <laughs> this is yeah, what Andrew insane. Wiggins has been for ten years. Why would he like this? This is Andrew yeah. Wiggins. My goodness. I did not buy into Wiggins at all. Oof. He had Jordan finals MVP buzz like two two seasons before that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Tyrese Halliburton. He had mine and Dylan's second team votes. What's here? Uh, Dylan, you want to talk about him? Uh, yeah, so he started out the season as the centerpiece on the best offense in the NBA. Um, everything revolved around him. The way he was able to push the ball in transition, dime up his teammates. The shot making was ridiculous. The three-pointer that looks like it's never going to go in, but somehow just never misses. Um, and then he got hurt. And the later season, he's, I think, playing through injury, trying to get to the 65-game minimum. So shout out to the NBA for making him do that. Um, but I'm giving credit to that early season, ignoring what I've seen lately. Um, early in the season, he was carrying one of the best offenses in the NBA. And without a great talent around him, there's still a 122.8 offensive rating when he's on the floor. Mm-hmm. To speak to that, uh, early season, first 32 games, it's 24 points per game, almost 13 assists per game on basically 50, 40, uh, like 86 splits. Since returning from injury, 16.6, nine assists, 45% from the field, and 33% from beyond the arc. So dropping from 40 to 33. But I just felt like in looking at the story of this year, I felt like he deserved it. Did he make Jack and Aaron? Do you make your guys as third teams, or did he fall out? Aaron, you want to go first? You're muted. He was in my third team. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then uh, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I, I left him off. I left for who? Halliburton off. Uh, for Jalen Brown. I respect it. I respect it. So, what's, what's the hesitancy on on him? Talk talks through it. On so on Brown over Halliburton. So Halliburton's second half has been really bad. The Pacers have been have are still um, above five hundred team, but the East sucks. He has missed Buddy Heald in a big way. Mm. I think when you watch that team. He, he kind of misses a bit of that spacing. They have Neesmith still, but Matherin can be spotty, and he's been he's been out for most of the last, like, what? He's been, he's been out a lot. Yeah. Uh, Nemard has, hasn't really been he's, been... he's been fine, but he hasn't been the elite shooter that he's flashed. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say... I, 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 hate, I hate arguing against Halliburton because I love his game. And I loved what he did in the first half. And obviously that in-season tournament run was fantastic. But it's hard for me to look at that bad of a second half with that many issues and ignore an almost 24-point-per-game scorer who takes on the top one of the top defensive roles basically every night for one of the best teams in the league. I can't, I, I, it's hard to justify leaving that guy off for Halliburton, who looked so bad for half the year. Yeah. And I know he's hurt, and like I understand that he's hurt. It's not against him. Like that's understandable. He's hurt. He's getting back from it. But it's, I gotta give to I gotta give to Bron, Jalen Brown here. Fair enough. All right, let's read out those third teams, boys, and see who uh, who we've got the most commonality on. Because everyone left is just a single second team selection that we haven't really dove deeper in our discussions on. Aaron, who's your your thirds? My third team consisted of Stephen Curry, Devin Booker, if he plays in, I think, two more games. I think he has two mm-hmm. more games to get into. Demonis Sabonis, Anthony Edwards, and Tyrese Halbert. A lot of guys already touched on. Um, mm. I-, I consider the second team basically like a whole season of like kickassery. And the third team was, was there's some guys with some inconsistent moments. Um, like the Warriors have been kind of shit. The Kings have been disappointing. Um the Halliburton's had a tough second half. They kind of found their way to the third team. That's fair. Dylan, who are your third team guys? Uh, Kevin Durant, who we already talked about. Um, let me, before I make a fool of myself, just check games played on this guy right here. 
Oh. Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> is, is Donovan Mitchell? <laughs> yeah, it was Donovan Mitchell. Oh, yeah, yeah no, he's done didn't that. make it. Yeah, he didn't make oh, it. Oh yeah, he's 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 out. All right, then I guess that frees up a spot for our um good friend Demonte Sabonis. Woo! Let's go. <laughs> Let's All NBA. All NBA. And, and and then Steph Curry and LeBron. Um, okay. and then I guess it's like who who's next? Like Anthony Davis. As, as the last spot? I mean, if you want him to be, he the, can. The, the, the second best Follow player your on, heart. The, on the nine seed? <laughs> Follow Since, your heart. I, I was Davis LeBron in the second team. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I was on. Whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah. whoa. Then, Lakers then I'm, are then the I'm... eighth seed at the moment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. That, that... okay, big fucking... Then I'm, Can I... then I'm, then I'm convinced. <laughs> Kev, Kevin Durant, LeBron and Davis, Steph Curry, and we'll go Domas. Can I take a second really quickly to acknowledge some of the players, the four players that might have been all NBA but uh, missed uh, missed too many games with Joel Embiid, Donovan Mitchell, Kyrie Irving, and a little Alperen Shingun. Maybe he got some consideration but missed the mark, unfortunately. No no love for uh, Jimmy Butler, who also missed the mark. Laurie Markkinen also missed the mark. Not even a second, not even uh, a I Jamal Murray. Think, I, I did not think about Lori Martin. Jamal Murray. Lori, do you know what the Jazz's defensive rating is? I do you know what their record is in the last 30 there. games? They're like yeah, 4 so and 26. <laughs> I, I saw it for just like all recent All Stars. And so Lori was in my like grand oh, player man. pool. And I started eliminating guys by, by missed games. All right. Um, hang on, hang Jack, on. Who, b- b- before we move on from the Larry Martin and slander. Do we know okay. what the net rating is when he's actually playing? They're the worst oh, team in the. It? They're one of the worst teams in the NBA, and they're they're a positive zero point two when he's on the on the floor. That's Look like that. the really king's. Good. That's oh, like yeah. the king's net rating on the season. <laughs> okay, all right. Honest, hell, honestly, honestly, I'm, I'm a little bit. I was well played. I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit pissed at the Jazz because when we did like a mid season, we, we all met for a mid season bond, and I was so proud of myself for fucking nailing. The Utah Jazz. Like at the beginning of the season, I made this big old video. It's like, you know what? I actually kind of like this collection of guys, and I like Will Hardy. I think they'll be okay. I think they'll win some games. And early in the season, they did. And I felt like mm-hmm. a genius. And then at the trade deadline, they destroyed it. Everything that I loved was all like Oche Abaji was gone, Olenek was gone, and the team was terrible, and I looked like an idiot. And then that video got views again. That's when that video got views. Oh, no. After. <laughs> Now it's the oh, it's hell. Anyway, I, I had a video on the Hall of Fame, just letting in Vince and Billups because they were the first to announce. So I was like, "This is great, good job, Basketball Hall of Fame, way to keep the bar high." And like you know, it, it got views and they tapered off. Like three days later, they announced that also Michael Cooper and uh, Walter Davis got in. I was like, "Fuck," because now it's getting views again. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. You sure? You sure? I All right, Jack. Hall of Fame video on that. <laughs> Who are your three? Booker, Curry, Jalen Brown, LeBron, Davis. So notable. Was I too high on LeBron and Davis? Sorry, Maybe. Jack. Go ahead. That's okay. You're good. Notable exclusions were Kyrie. I think was at, is at 63. So if he plays two more games, I don't he's at 55. Yeah, oh, he's, he's at 55. Out. Which is crazy because I, I don't remember being that injured, and he's still at fully fifty. Yeah, right. Game. Like I, I wanted. Yes. To put same thing. There. Same thing for Mitchell when I was making my team. I was like, yeah, he he hasn't missed. Like yeah. he missed that stretch, but he hasn't missed that much time. And I was like, wait, has he missed? Okay, yeah. It was early. He missed, early. He missed a lot of time early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really, really, really wanted to include Zion or Brandon Ingram. Yeah. Brandon Ingram, I think, might get it. He's currently injured, and he needs to play two more games. Uh. I don't know if he'll actually get there. I don't think he'll get there. But I wanted to give them love because the Pelicans have been awesome this year. Yeah. Uh, Ingram was probably my next guy as well. Yeah. I, I couldn't figure out a way to shoehorn Ingram or Williamson in over Brown, Halliburton. I went with uh, Davis, Booker, Kawhi, Jalen Brown, Zion Williamson for my third time. Oh, you got him in. There we go. Notably excluding LeBron James. Why am I the highest on these two fucking Lakers, guys? What's happening? I have both second teams. I am stunned that you left LeBron off. You've got his jersey what? hanging up right behind you. I mean, I do. He's made 
<laughs> he's made enough <laughs> of the A team. That's mirrored. I just, I don't know which way I'm pointing, but um, you know the thing is, I watch. I, I, I like dug into the Lakers on off numbers. They're a lot better with LeBron on and Davis off than Davis without LeBron and whatnot. I I don't. I have watched a ton of Lakers games this season. I mean, I watch a ton every season, but I've watched there's a lot, and I feel like whenever they play. It's LeBron giving up the defensive lapses that Davis then has to cover for. Um, offensively, they you put LeBron out there, you can you can generate offense. Um, you have to put a lot of defenders around him to like continue to play well. I just I, I felt like this has been some of the emptiest numbers that I've ever seen from LeBron. But in the last I don't know, 21 years, yeah, 25, 7, and 8 looks really good. But when he used to give you 25, 7, and 8, that was a 50-win team. And right now, it's just like he knows how to get his numbers. He knows how to get there. But it's not winning games. They're, they're winning because of their defense. And that is that is not LeBron's forte. That is not where he is helping that team. And I I will say, I punished the Lakers for being this bad. Like, I, I wanted a second Celtic in. I wanted to have of uh, Brown in because of how good the team has been and how much he has meant playing defense. I also got some good efficiency numbers for him, um, but I just I couldn't get there with having both LeBron and Davis. So it's like I'm, I'm only taking one of the two, and I, I went with LeBron. I'm making an amendment. I'm changing it. <laughs> you changing I it? I, I can't be the highest person on LeBron James. I'm not doing <laughs> good, this. Good, yeah. Bring him down to the third. Um, I brought um, puts the bonus, in, puts bonus in the second. Come on, Eric. I put I put Edwards in the second. Oh, Actually, that's, that's exciting. Exciting. That too. Yeah, yeah. They, now Edwards LeBron, is unanimous second. LeBron's defense this year. I mean, it, it's it's for the last two years. It's kind of the hardest LeBron take to talk about. But I always try and go to the Lakers Kings games because they're always exciting. But it's always like, oh shit, I get to see LeBron. He, if Weminyama gets to that level. I am not going to have that much trouble getting into the Webby goat conversation because of emotional emotional attachment to like seeing Braun play because his defense in the last couple of years has gotten a little bit scary. I'm sure Nate knows exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes he gets into it with refs for just the entire possession. And the Lakers are like he is complaining histrionics mm-hmm. on one end of the court. And you only see it because you're live. Because you're like, oh yeah, he's right there. The camera's looking at the actual game where the Lakers are getting pummeled. And like in LeBron's matchup is is dancing all over the Lakers defense. And LeBron is in histrionics on the other end of the court. And he obviously has his incredible possessions, but he gives up so many 4v5s with the Lakers. It's insanity. You don't realize it till you're live. Mm-hmm. The, I mean, that, number is still the like broadcast is taken to showing it. Like the bro- the broadcast is taken to like there's a fast break going on and it will cut away from the fast break big sometimes and <laughs> be like it's just, yeah it's LeBron <laughs> underneath the basket that the Lakers are trying to score on still arguing <laughs> as the other team you don't know what's going on on the other end you're like is it a dead ball do they get the stop and then like oh the other team now has three more points like yeah great great thanks LeBron. Um, it just I couldn't get there with having both of them them on this team. And the Lakers are when they've been winning, it's been through defense. So that that was Davis for me. Uh Aaron, you are now the highest guy on Davis. Do you uh you want to talk about Anthony? <laughs> it's like out as well. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> can I make it, can an announcement? A quick live pod announcement that the, the Houston Rockets have been eliminated from playoff contention. They're no longer, no longer in. They are mathematically Tari eliminated. Eason. Tari Eason, I will never forgive you for this. You gave me so much hope, dude. I was so rooting for you. <sighs> I can't even. My body rejects yeah. the idea of you know, Anthony um, Davis. Before, before you do that, can I give a brief, um, very brief defense of LeBron? Sure. Yeah. Um, usage is higher than Jalen Brown. Scoring efficiency is higher than Jalen Brown. Assist percentage better than Jalen Brown. Um, when they are both on the court, there is less than one point in the offensive rating between the two. So to say that LeBron's stats are empty while Jalen Brown's are impactful when 
Jalen Brown is clearly his superior teammates and their offenses are basically the same. Um, I think it's maybe misguided. Um, certainly the defensive difference is is great. Um, Brown is by far a better on-ball defender, although LeBron still might be, be better as a help defender when he tries. Um, but when I he tries... Wanna, I, I just don't wanna I just don't wanna skip over the fact that LeBron is a more efficient scorer on higher volume and by you know impact numbers on off numbers they they can be noisy, they can be flawed, but by far a better player um from all indications in terms of impact than Jalen Brown is. I mean if you want to just go by what the numbers say, but sometimes don't vibes matter. Yeah vibes <laughs> Yeah, J- Jalen Jalen Brown is a vibes pick. the The numbers on 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 Brown over Davis are, are very ugly, um, but certainly vibes. Um, no no contest. For I mean, okay, I mean, I, I, in support of that, if I was doing like all NBA is not an all. I mean, I guess with positionless, it is essentially a top fifteen. But for MVP, when I did a top fifteen, I have LeBron higher than Jalen Brown. But I have Jalen Brown, I guess, higher than LeBron when I was prioritizing for All NBA because I think there is some. There's a lot of him. I think his offense is infinitely more impactful than Jalen Brown's offense. But Jalen Brown's defense, I think, I think there's probably numbers that wouldn't support it. But it feels like it, which is why I'm saying it. <laughs> Vibes. Uh- I, I I do think I do think there's a case. I just don't think that we yeah. should all be saying LeBron is. You know, a garbage player, and then he's not garbage. Put in, yeah. And then put in Jalen Brown, whose team is six points better on offense when he's off the floor. Celtics are also yeah. really good. Yeah, I Celtics hope. are really good. It messes with the numbers. The fact that the Celtics are so yeah. good. Um, really good. Anyway, Aaron, Aaron, uh, t- tell us why. It. Tell us why Anthony Davis is on par with Demontis Sabonis. He's going to play like seventy-five games. I'm like, I, I, Davis is going to be healthy. Honestly, a huge part of why I I like LeBron and Davis so much is I think the the roster around them is the worst roster in the league. I I talked about the shit shuffle. It's like they got a really good D'Lo season. Like D'Lo has been surprisingly good this year, and still it's like holy shit! Can we please not like please help? Um. Davis is 15th in points per game, and he's third in rebounds per game, and he's second in blocks per game. The rebounding numbers have been astonishing. Um, he has just owned the glass um, and been the kind of the consistent the consistent part of this Lakers team that has been one of the better teams. Um, it's The West is pretty brutal, and I feel like the rest of the roster isn't giving me any favors. And I mean, we said before the season, like, if Davis can stay healthy, well, he's healthy, and he's playing really well. And so I just, I'm just back to the caliber of player that he is. Yeah. I and mean, if the Lakers' most common lineup is Reeves, Rui, LeBron, Davis, and D how many good defensive players are in that lineup? Exactly. He makes up for all of this garbage. <laughs> this yeah. he's should he be defensive player of the year? I don't know. I don't know. Not quite. Uh, the, the numbers are, we'll get there or next. <laughs> but uh, uh we we've talked about uh, 14 guys. Uh Devin Booker, or I think has or we've talked about 13 guys. Devin Booker made all of everyone's teams. Does anyone have an impassioned Case for Booker, Dylan. You are the high man with having him on second team. Yeah, I'll make a very simple case, and that the only time that the Suns look like a team that might legitimately do something is when Devin Booker is playing. Um, I think he's clearly the most impactful offensive player. He has a higher usage and scoring efficiency than Durant does. Um, I think he really has been their point guard. He's at a, at a thirty percent um, assist percentage. Uh, which is, you know, by far the highest of his, well, it's actually not the highest of his career, but very high in his career and easily better than Durant. Um, Durant off Booker on minutes are better than than the other way around. So that's Booker on Durant off is better than the other way around. Um, 122 offensive rating when he's on, nine points worse when he's off. Uh, I think he's just an incredibly impactful offensive player. Yeah. And if you just look at, 
the games that they have him for, uh, written down here, they're 40 and 23 with Booker. They're six and eight without Booker. Now, usually when they have Booker, it's Booker and Durant versus um, when you just have Durant, it's not necessarily Durant and someone else. So like that does skew the numbers, but Booker has has helped them be an elite team when he's been healthy. And does anybody know off the top of their head, assuming because most of you guys are on social media, you might know this. Do you know what Booker's stats are against the New Orleans Pelicans this year? <laughs> It's like forty night, wasn't it? It's it's fifty a night. It's oh it the um he's the first player, um other than Wilt Chamberlain, who you almost don't count in scoring titles because his stats are so ridiculous. He's the only player apart from Wilt who um scored fifty against the same team three straight times playing them. Yeah. Oh my god. Fifty two points per game. Uh on it's a great defense. Seventy nine point four percent true shooting. Now, for the one that you guys really can't guess, who does Devin Booker have his lowest points per game against? I will give you a hint. Second it man. is an Eastern Conference team. I'm, I'm guessing it's someone bad because he just blows them out and doesn't play the fourth quarter. Mm, Charlotte. Dylan was on the right track. It is the Detroit, Detroit Pistons. Yeah. Wow, seven bro. points per game against the Detroit Pistons. Seven points a game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, What's never. He doing? It's 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 not that he doesn't have to play the fourth quarter. It's that he doesn't have to play the second, third, or fourth quarter. <laughs> he just goes into the first quarter and they're up by forty. <laughs> Wait, that was, yeah, uh, it, that was the game requirement game. It was uh, it, it was he got injured playing five oh, minutes. Okay. Uh, seven seven points, points in the first five minutes. It it would have been a great game, but uh, all right. That has been 14 of our guys. There's just three kind of odd. Well, then we talked about Jalen Brown. So that's that's 15. So it's just my one Zion case. And then uh, Dylan and Aaron, you guys have Steph Curry. Neither Jack or I put Curry in there. Oh, I have Jack. Yeah, Jack has Curry. Yeah, I have Curry. Jack on three. three? How many yeah. guys do you Booker, have on your... <laughs> Booker, no. Don't do this to me. Booker, Curry, Brown, <laughs> James Davis. That's fine. Booker. Okay. Booker, oh yeah, because you were elim- Brown James Davis. Yep. Yep. Because you eliminated Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> could have just could have just had Halliburton. No, I don't. But wanna. no. All right. Talk. Tell me about Curry. Why should I have him? Still bitter about it. Does Curry need a case anymore? Is he only good player so. on that team? He's the only, He's the good, only player good player on that ever, team. Ever, but also on that team. Yeah, that team is terrible. With that, I, I don't know what the on-off stats are for the Warriors, but they're always terrible. And this year, they have to be uniquely terrible. They're, they're not, not crazy. They're not. But I, honestly, I feel like the thing is, when you're always on the court for a shitty, mediocre team, your on-off numbers yeah. look kind of funky. And, and so it's like... Mm. When the yeah, Warriors I, play well is literally random. Like, who knows? There's no rhyme or reason to when they start playing good basketball. Sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not. Yeah. Uh, they're like plus 0.32 uh, with them on versus with them off. It's like very little difference. But I think to Aaron's point, yeah, when he plays as much as he does, which it, it just mm-hmm. skews all your numbers. Yeah, um, with the garbage time filter, it's plus three point seven, so it's a little bit, a little bit kinder. Oh, okay. Glad, glad the garbage time filter. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I couldn't get there. I felt like I felt like Curry also has kind of the Tyrese Halliburton thing, where he had a really good stretch and then fell off. Um, and I'm like, I- I'm gonna remember this Tyrese Halliburton season. I probably won't remember the Steph Curry season. It's such an unreal start, though. The first 42 games, it's just like a big ass part of the season. Season, it's 28 points, five assists, and four boards. Um, he's taking 11.83s a game at, at 41 percent from deep. It's, it's like the, it's like the <laughs> it's Stop. like the greatest <laughs> shooting season ever. I mean, he was spacing the floor and scoring from anywhere at at a pace that just kept this Warriors team afloat. Um. He had a sixty. <laughs> he had sixty in there at some point. He had a sixty-point game. Um, 
the guys that just missed the cut for me were Zion and Jalen Brown. Yeah. I I did a lot of Tyrese Maxey digging because someone asked me on TikTok like about Maxey. And, and so like my my guys that just missed were Curry, LeBron, and Maxey. And I felt like Maxey had a really good year, but just couldn't quite get, get him there. I was poking around a bunch of other people's like mocked up all NBA teams, and I was shocked by how many people had Maxi. I like Maxi was a consideration, but mm-hmm. he would be like it would I would be sweating a little bit if I had to put him in a fourth team. Really? Sweating for fourth? Yeah. Like I, I felt like he's like my yeah, 18th right? guy here. Well, pretty, I'm, I'm, well, now pretty I'm just fine. freestyling. So I'm freestyling. I'm yeah. not script. Yeah. But what Zion I'd want to put Zion in there. I'd want to put I don't know, I am not gonna be able to do this off the top of my head. But <laughs> it's because I'm, t- I'm just gonna name five guys who don't meet the requirement. The five best yeah. guys that just do yeah. it I, I wanted to make a case for Paolo because I feel like the, the magic oh, would have been Paolo so good. Paolo is a guy I could make a case for, I guess. Do you know they're eight points per hundred possessions better with him off than with him on? I, I don't I refuse to believe that that matters. <laughs> Magic's bench is insane. <laughs> it's it's just the, Jonathan Isaac. Is what yeah, they bring in Jonathan Isaac and all of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the start of the year, the bench was insane with the Mo Wagner, uh, Cole Anthony combo. It just, they also do this weird thing where like they didn't want to fuck with their second unit. So for half the year, they just, when starters yeah. would get hurt, they'd pull the third stringers and yeah. start them. And it was like, maybe we don't need to play Caleb Houston as a starter. Like, yeah, they're starting Goga Batonte. Yeah, the Look Magic great. also score great. about sixty-five points a game, and so the on-off numbers are a little funky. <laughs> yeah, gentlemen, I know we had planned to do all NBA, all defense, and all rookie. What do you say we cut this here? I send out another link, and we run a uh, Monday and a Thursday pod. If you got time for it, yeah, I can do. Um, well, yeah, as. as- or, or um, uh, check it. or we do just one more. Um, all defense and the rookie to be quicker. I mean, we can I, cut it here, or we just keep going. And I just thought I'd... I can be here next Sunday. <laughs> hey, you guys are uh, uh, free to oh. go on without me, but you gotta get oh, on. you release it. Oh, sorry, you release the yeah. No, no, I cut it. I was saying again. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, oh, yeah, I was yeah. like, I can't record tomorrow. Okay. No, no, yeah, no. I don't. Yeah, yeah let's okay. cut it. Let's cut it here and rejoin, and we'll, uh, we'll power yeah. through. We, we could probably do defensive and rookies in like 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we, we can be a lot quicker about that. Yeah, yeah. all on the MVP is important stuff. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's plug our stuff in the circle. Well, here, Aaron, where you what you got to plug? Uh, possible chairs on TikTok, possible chairs on Twitter, and my Patreon. Possible Chairs Media Lounge. Come hang out and read stuff I'm writing. Dylan, where can the people find you? Every week on the Hoops Temple Podcast. Jack the Kings fan, where can the people find you? Uh, by that username on TikTok or Instagram and at Twitter, on Twitter, Jack Dan KF. You can find me, Nate underscore Hoops Temple on TikTok or YouTube and you can email the pod at hoopstemple.gmail.com. Also, we've got the Discord. It's starting to be a little bit hopping. Come on, jump in, chat with us. We'd love to talk to you there.